Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Chris and today we like to speak for Caspa and more specifically for why Caspa is the fastest proof of work that ever happened in the history and how through that speed actually Caspa became so scalable that it solved the trilemma. Okay, the trilemma was the scalability, security and decentralization, which for years the competitors out there, the other layer ones, tried to uh achieve but they fail to achieve that because in order to succeed with the scalability they sacrifice the security or the decentralization so caspa came into the game with the same principles of the bitcoin the same fundamentals of, of the bitcoin plus the innovation of the protocols that they implemented and through all of these they took the competition into the next level and actually caspa right now called as a digital silver because it's solving the scalability the security and the decentralization and in a way it actually accomplished the main vision of the satoshi nakamoto to create a peer-to-peer -peer transaction system without any third party involved in that kind of transactions so that's why it's called digital silver and guys caspa right now the time that we are speaking is so early so in this video we're gonna actually dive deep how the blockchain works how uh, caspa exploited some flaws of the blockchain and through the innovation they actually uh, finally succeed into the scalability uh, and also we're gonna see a little bit about the price of caspa what's happening uh right now because if as you remember yesterday i told you that the next level of caspa is the 0 0.033 cents and today guys a couple hours later basically after the video which i uploaded we achieved that target so uh on this video also i'm gonna speak for the short term next price target what i believe is gonna happen all the potential scenarios and if you are interested to know all of these things around the proof of work of Caspa and how they actually achieve the scalability, because the today's video is going to be more educational, plus what's happening in the price, all you have to do is to remain until the end of the video. And before we continue, I would like to declare you that I'm not financial advisor. Whatever you're going to see on this video is my own personal opinion, my personal approach. Always do your own research before any kind of investment. And guys, if you are caspa investor also subscribe to this channel because i'm gonna upload every day videos about caspa and i'm sharing with you very valuable informations every day don't rely on titles of the videos just go inside and every day i say something different about the caspa that um, i have researched for hours okay and i try to give it to you in the most simple way and also guys i have my patreon group here where you're gonna find me in the this private telegram community where uh i'm there i'm there for you 24 7 you can ask me absolutely everything if you would like to reach me out i'm gonna be there uh you can ask me your question for example and i'm gonna reply that as fast as possible and also we have lots of multi-millionaires uh lots of people with a uh, very high knowledge in the crypto space all together we are speaking for crypto related things and etc also guys you're gonna have access to my crypto portfolio you're gonna see exactly what i'm holding in real time also, you're going to see my buy signals, take profit signals and sell signals in real time. OK, I'm fully transparent and you're going to see how I actually optimize my portfolio for the best gains. So if you are looking to build connections, to have fun, to upgrade your knowledge and um, make gains, this Patreon group is for you and I'm waiting to see you there. So, guys, let's take the things from the beginning. And uh, before actually we speak for the analysis, I would like to uh, explain you and educate you uh, how actually Caspa exploited some flaws of the proof of work Nakamoto consensus. And through that flaws, actually Caspa achieved the scalability. Let's start with the basics, how actually the blockchain works. Guys, blockchain had started with a Genesis block. Genesis block, as you can clearly see in the picture, is the first block that ever created. Through that block, in chain, Bitcoin create block after block per 10 minutes. Miners actually create block every 10 minutes. Through that block, there is a certain transaction. So as you understand, uh, when we have a big um, congestion into the network, this cannot scale because uh, people would like to do more transactions. This block uh, has a limit. Every block of uh, the blockchain, of the typical blockchain, I mean, for of the Bitcoin, has a limit of transactions. It's two megabyte uh, the size of the block. So uh, the next block is going to happen in 10 minutes. So as you understand, when we have congestion into the market, this process is very, very slow. So what 
was the solution back in the days before CASPA. The solution was to either to increase the block size to make the, every block for Bitcoin uh, bigger or create the block creation speed faster than 10 minutes. When it comes to uh, inaction, we saw lots of hard forks to try to do that, like Bitcoin Cash, like Bitcoin Gold, all, all of these type of uh, hard forks that created back, back in the days, 2015, 2016, uh, they, would, uh, they would like actually to solve this scalability issue of the Bitcoin because the early adopters of the Bitcoin understood that there is a problem in the scalability when it comes into the congestion. So uh, they tried to do that, but they failed to achieve that because they had to sacrifice the security. Why they had to, to sacrifice the security? Guys, blockchain, when two miners actually create a block at the same time, as you can clearly see the, the picture here, we create a parallel blocks. It created the same time, so in the blockchain, we, we jump straight into two blocks. This is the um, situation which we call the one block orphan. One of these blocks are orphan blocks. And through the logist chain rule, one block of these two must be discarded and how actually we decide which of those two blocks are discarded through the logist chain rule logist chain rule says that the uh, miner who has spent the more computational power win so the other is discarded and you can clearly see that uh, when for example the first block is discarded then we continue and we the blocks creation in a straight line so when we have the orphan blocks the problem here is that is less secure okay i'm not gonna dive into more technological stuff why is less secure and it's actually uh the fear of uh, more attack and uh, also is it has more energy consumption because all the transactions here are going invalid and as you understand we have even more delay of the network more ed energy consumption and all of these things so hard forks when they like bitcoin cash and all of these hard forks when they actually went to increase the block size or the speed of the creation of the blocks then they faced a problem because they were creating more orphan blocks for that reason so this was less secure so they had to decrease the security in order to increase the scalability so guys, what Caspa did to solve this current situation and they actually exploit the orphan blocks. They took the DAG protocol, which the DAG protocol is a mathematical structure, which is going, as you can clearly see, uh, every new node or cycle called as you would like, references into multiple parents instead of a single one as the Bitcoin does. So in that way, they... Uh, use that DAG structure, but instead of these cycles, they use blocks. This is why CASPA is the first block DAG that ever created. And right now we have a block DAG, which is actually a combination of a DAG protocol with blocks. Okay, this is what block DAG means. And you can clearly see that live in the mainnet of the CASPA, because here is exactly block by block how we create uh, these blocks. And as you know, CASPA has uh, a ratio of one block per second. So you understand how fast is the CASPA. So what CASPA did in a uh, matter of that, it scaled this current situation because they actually exploit the, the orphan blocks through the DAG protocol, but with blocks. And this is crazy. And so you understand that we exploit every orphan block that we create here. And that's why we are moving into that uh, way. This is the simplest way that I can explain to you to understand fully how Caspa exploit technology and actually the innovative uh, protocol that actually gives solution to the scalability issue. We build in some way up to Nakamoto consensus, but with a ghost DAG protocol. Okay, this is where the ghost DAG are uh, implemented, and this is why Caspa is the first block DAG that ever created. This is exactly why we have so many blocks uh, creation, and this is how Caspa can scale. And after all of this exploitation of the orphan blocks, guys, Caspa also is more environmental friendly because uh, we exploit the orphan blocks instead of discarded. And uh, because, as I told you, in the blocks in which are uh, discarded the orphan blocks, uh, we have more energy consumption, which is more harmful for our environment. 
And guys, this is only the beginning because Kaspa uh, Ghost Duck has some flaws too, which is going to be upgraded in the future through the Dark Knight. Dark Knight, guys, is going to be astonishing perfection update uh, it's gonna actually solve the trilemma into a way that it won't be competition also we have the language we're gonna jump from golang to uh, rustlang so you understand how scalable is gonna be the caspa this is why uh, is the fastest proof of work that ever created because the blocks that we create here uh, can scale a lot okay we can have lots of transactions per minute so as you understand uh is superior from scalability side than Bitcoin, while it has the same security and decentralization as Bitcoin because it has the fundamentals of the Bitcoin. So uh, for the difference with Bitcoin is that Bitcoin right now is not a competitor of Caspa. Bitcoin has scarcity, that's why it has only 21 million uh, coins. Caspa has 28 billion coins out there. So uh, Caspa has the role of digital silver to actually do these peer-to-peer transactions uh, instead of the Bitcoin, which Bitcoin right now has one goal, which is the store value, is the digital gold and the digital silver. This is the differences. So this is exactly what I would like to speak about, the proof of work. This is why Caspa is the fastest proof of work, because they exploit the flaws of the Bitcoin and uh, they took those with an innovation for advantage of the Caspa and they solved the trilemma. And let's speak for the price because, guys, you can clearly see that right now Caspa is standing at 0.032 cents. And to remind you that yesterday, guys, Caspa was standing at 0.028 cents. And I told you that we have two technical price targets. The first technical price target is exactly this resistance of the Fibonacci level, which is at 0.033 cents. And the next one is the 0.04243 cents, which is exactly at this one. So here we have two choices. The one choice is actually to continue straight to that line at 0.043 cents. And the other is actually Bitcoin drop into levels like under $30,000, $29,000, which I don't believe is going to happen. I'm expecting to see Bitcoin anytime soon at 35, 36, even $38,000. But let's say if we're going to see the drop, Caspa, from that point that is starting, we'll do a retest of this support, of this massive upturn movement. Otherwise, if Bitcoin will pump, guys, I'm expecting furthermore rally of Caspa straight to this 0.044 cents. And then maybe if Bitcoin gonna do um, a pullback, a healthy pullback. I believe lots of people gonna take some profits of Casa. Personally, I won't take any kind of profit, only I buy in the big dips of Caspa because I'm holding Caspa for the long term. It's I have very big position in Caspa and I believe that Caspa will be in the top five in the next run, even in top three, if everything is going to happen perfectly and we won't have any um, drawback or whatsoever. So this is exactly, guys, the video. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know down below in the comment section what you would like to see next. I'm going to be there for you. And thank you so much for your support. It, mean, it means a lot. The group of Patreon is uh, growing and I'm very grateful for that. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I will see you guys all in my next video. Until then, your boy Chris is out. Bye.